Hey guys, so here is my original CR10. You may remember about two years ago I made uh, a video on this. Matter of fact, this is the one that has the, uh, the Ziltec uh, external bracing here for it. Uh, I'm not really sure this bracing is very effective, but uh, the bracing is going to stay because it took so long to get on here. But what we're gonna do is I bought from Bontech their dual drive extruder. Um, this is their uh, DDS solution for the CR10S. And this printer a few weeks ago, I upgraded the electronics. So now it is a CR10S in electronics. And I also put a, a second lead screw on there. I got all those components from Tiny Machines. So the CR10 is now technically a CR10S. And this wonderful device should just bolt on, plug in, install their firmware, and off we go. So I know there are cheaper solutions out there. You could go on Thingiverse or My Mini Factory, find some sort of mount that uses an E3D and a Bontech. I, I, I get it, I get it. But my thought is that this for 260 bucks should be a major time saver. And basically they've done all the hard work for you. So we're gonna get this set up, installed, and we're also gonna do a BL Touch. And they also provide the firmware for that and a mount for it. So we're gonna get all that together and see how it goes. Are you ready? Let's do it. Welcome back. So, first of all, welcome to my channel where nerdy is cool. 3D printing, props, cosplay, R2D2 builds, you name it, I'm into it. If you haven't seen me before and if you kind of like my content, give me a like and subscribe. If you're a regular visitor, welcome back. So here we go. I, first of all, <laughs> I can already tell in the comment section below that you guys are gonna say I paid way too much money buying this from Bontech, spending 260 bucks, when I could have probably gone on Thingiverse, printed my own mount, bought a clone E3D V6, bought a clone BM, you know, a BMG extruder, and got out of this a whole lot cheaper. Well, you're probably right. But on the other hand, I have printed a lot of those mounts and I have printed a lot of those pieces and I have not, I'm not a big fan of buying clone hardware. I know some of you had great luck with it, but for me, I'd rather buy the genuine article. I'm the same deal with my, with my filament. I prefer to buy the more expensive stuff versus buying the cheapest thing that will possibly fit in my printer. So it's just the way, my, my point of view. Now I did, there are several incarnations of uh, mounts and part cooling fan ducts out there, and I'm sure some of them work very well. Uh, I have actually, I mean, I even bought, you know, a Bontech extruder and I bought an E3D V6, thinking that's the way I was going to go. But some of those, I wasn't sure whether I should stick with PLA to print those, should I be using PETG? I mean, we're dealing with something that's gonna be holding a hot end, what's the right material to use, et cetera, et cetera. And then, well, what about, you know, on a lot of those, some of them didn't have an auto bed leveling mount. You know, what if I wanna use a BL Touch or an easy ABL? So all those factors made me drum my fingers going, I really quite haven't found the perfect solution that I wanna use. So when I saw this for 260 bucks, I kinda of sat there, pursed my lips and thought, well, what's your time worth? I mean, you know, do you, do you want to spend, you know, eight, nine, 10 hours, you know, printing things? Do you want to spend a lot of time trying to, you know, run wires and, and do all that? Or do you want to have the nice convenience of bolting something on, following the very detailed instructions, and then use their firmware. And if you have any questions, you can utilize their customer support. So there's a convenience factor here, and this is what we're going to check out. So as I mentioned in the intro, this is originally an original CR10. It's been upgraded to a CR10S uh, electronics dual lead screw. Uh, on the back with the dual lead screws, I went with solid couplers. On my CR10S, it has these couplers that can split apart. And uh, it's, I've, I've just found that that is not a whole lot of fun. The uh, bed surface, I have a polypropylene bed. I got this from Tiny Machines. I've had really good luck with these. Um, I would love to have a magnetic and PEI spring steel combination, but right now those seem to be really hard to find, but that's fine. I've had good luck with these. Uh, sometimes I find I have to add a dab of hairspray for a little better adhesion, but this build surface has worked pretty well. And as I mentioned, the whole goal here is I wanna get this printer up and online and printing as quickly as possible. So we're gonna go through the kit, show you what's inside. I'm not gonna go too detailed on what's in here and in, in the installation because frankly, there are other videos out there that do that. For me, I just wanna see 
how well it works, and if it's a big time saver. All right, here we go. All right. Is that it? Okay. Molly. Okay, this is the filament out sensor. Uh, I don't use filament out sensors. I prefer to be old school and just make sure you have enough filament. So, uh, and I already contacted Bontech support asking, you know, is there anything I need to do in the firmware or in the settings to make sure I, I don't need this? So they already answered a few of those questions. I don't know the answer off the top of my head, but I'll have to look through my emails. And, there it is. Very nice. And as you can see, very well laid out. Got a lot of these little styrofoam dust marks here. Just trying to get all those out. This is really well done. And they have a nice new cable here. And there's the uh, plug in for the out sensor, it looks like. And our little bag of hardware. Nice. All right, let's put this stuff back in the box so the caps don't chew up styrofoam. Okay. I like to use a paper plate and just Lay everything out. Okay, we're on one of our first steps. We're gonna to have to get inside the electronic box. And uh, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be uh, changing the, uh, uh, the value uh, for the extruder uh, stepper driver. We're gonna be bringing that down to between 0.4 and 0.5 volts. The other thing we're gonna do while we're in here is we're going to be plugging in the wiring for the BL Touch. Uh, I anticipate that being a good time. Okay, the voltage has been done. I had to tape the LCD wires to the side here to get at everything okay. Uh, I just ran the BL Touch extension wires. I just have to find uh, where in the board, I think it's right over here, but I'm gonna refer to their uh, diagram real quick, and then uh, that will be done. Okay. That's uh, fun to get in there. You gotta pay real careful attention to what screw sizes, so definitely uh, I would uh, recommend having the ruler handy. But uh, so far it looks good. I wish there was a better way to tuck this wire around. A BL Touch is gonna go right here, so. Uh, I guess it'll wind up getting tucked away with all those wires too. But uh, this is going kind of cool. Well, I have to take back my previous comment. They have a nice little guide here to run that fan wire off to the side. And right there at the top is where the BL Touch, the uh, probe mount will attach. Very clever. Okay, we're back at it this morning, and good news to report. I heard from Bontech. They're in Germany, so I don't know how many hours on the time zone that is. I think it's seven or eight. But anyway, they answered my questions. Uh, uh, Joel from their tech support, kudos to you. Uh, not only did they give me some good advice about the wiring, which I had resolved on my own, but uh, when I pointed out the issues with the BL Touch mount, they said, no problem, we've made a new one. They gave me the link on GitHub. They've altered their documentation to reflect that new part. And uh, they also said, by the way, we've also updated our firmware, improved baby stepping, so be sure to download that. So I'm about ready to print the new part. I'll update the firmware, and we should be ready to give this thing a try here shortly. So, yay Bontech. Okay, the new mount is in. Everything's wired up. We just had an auto home, and it did a beautiful job. And 
I got a little lazy on my electronic box. I, I took the contacts uh, and uh, used hot glue, which I usually frowned upon, but I just didn't feel like soldering another connector. And uh, as you can see, it looks pretty good. Now it's time to uh, do a little bit of this offset work. I'll refer to 3D Maker News video on that. Okay, so one thing I encountered while uh, getting my Z offset was my, uh, I was hitting the very top of the uh, limit switch. So fortunately, what I can do is I can just go ahead and uh, remove this and uh, the, uh, this guy here will just attach to the top of it. So I'll have to remove that and then I'll be able to get my Z offset figured out. A lot of fun steps. I don't know if it's like that with the CR-10S, but at least with the uh, CR-10, um, which this is originally what it was, uh, it seems to be a few extra steps. Not a biggie, but <laughs> just another hurdle. So another part of that process is when you remove the uh, screws, these are uh, uh, new ones, spares I had, but the other ones were longer because they had to accommodate that extra piece of metal on top the Z-Limit switch mode. So, a heads up, if you're gonna do this upgrade, make sure you have some, uh, I guess these are probably uh, maybe eight or 10 uh, millimeter, because the other ones are clearly longer. Okay, so one more. Um, looks like I'm as low as I can go, because I'm hitting my, uh, looks like that's the mount piece for the uh, stepper motor, and the uh, cantry mount is hitting it. So the solution is gonna be simple. We're gonna crank up the bed springs, and uh, hopefully that'll fix things. Okay, so for the next trick, and I probably should have done this before I did my Z offset, but I can correct that. Uh, on my bed surfaces, uh, I've noticed with this one, because it has a large fan shroud in the front, that if you're using those little binder clips, I mean, you could probably put them on the side, there's no problem, but I find them to be an enormous pain on the rear end. So what I like to do is I have this GPU, uh, CPU, heat sink, self-adhesive, uh, silicone, um, it's not really a tape, but uh, uh, and it adheres on both sides, and they use them as a heat sink material. And what I like to do is I put uh, five squares, one in each corner, one in the middle, and that's how I'm going to adhere uh, this polypropylene bed to my CR10S. Okay, and here's the material. I'll admit I've never fed material into a Bontech before, so this is a bit of an experience. Yeah. Unscrewed the top there to make sure it was actually feeding in, and uh, they say to go full, go all the way, and then back three or four turns. And I feel like I'm a little closer than that, but it's definitely feeding filament. So that five times fast. So we'll do a little test. And that is, it's really that, that little test cube here. So if we had to bring in some. Bigger prints here shortly. Okay, we're upstairs. It's too loud downstairs to record the end of this video because I have five printers up and running. The printer that was upgraded, the CR10S, is running the Bontag DDS uh, just fine. I've had no issues whatsoever. The first print that came off the thing was perfect. I did a simple little extrusion cube, and then I've been doing the surgical ear mask, so that's what's been printing right now. Now. The couple things about the Creality CR10, first of all, if you have an original Creality CR10 and you're thinking about doing the upgrade to CR10S, you can do that. I got mine from Tiny Machines, I got the electronics, I got the second lead screw, and that all went together very, very easily. The one thing, as you may have recalled in the video earlier, was that the one thing that kind of bit me was I had to get rid of the Z limit switch, and there's also a bracket there that attaches to it. So, Overall, the install is super easy, but there may be a few gotchas on your CR10 just to be aware of. Now, that said, I know a lot of people are going to be saying that, you know, this is just too much money. You can go on Thingiverse. Greg3D made, the, you know, the very same thing called the tank, and then Bontech credits him with it as well. 
And yes, you can certainly print your own, source the hardware, do your own firmware. There's always gonna be those guys out there that are very talented like that and have no issue saving 260 bucks and doing it themselves. What I wanted though was I wanted to spend as little time as possible upgrading and more time printing. So what I did is by ordering that Creality CR10 DDS is it simply bolted on, went through the hurdles of getting the BL Touch. Actually, in hindsight, the BL Touch integration took more time than it's on the, 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 the DDS did. So in my opinion, if you're one of those guys that just wants to get it over and done with as soon as possible, my time is valuable to me, I have other things I wanna do, this is a great value. To the tinkerers out there that think that, well, you know, there's a bunch of different solutions out there, I can print something else that works just as good, more power to you. So that said, that's my video on the Bontech Creality Direct Drive System. I like it a lot. I'm looking at getting another one. I want to see if I can make one work on my TiVo Tornado. Got a conversation going on with them about that. That could be a future video. So thank you for watching. If you're not a subscriber already, please hit the button down below and become one. And remember, these are my social media contacts where you can find me online, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and of course the website where nerdyiscool.com. I thank you guys for watching. Look forward to your comments in the comment section below. Stay healthy. This COVID thing here looks like it's going to drag on for a little while longer. So stay healthy, stay secluded, and uh, keep watching my YouTube videos. All right, guys, that's all I got. Remember, this is where nerdy is cool.